artificial sweeteners are everywhere, even in foods that you might think of as healthy alternatives. But don't be fooled, sugar-free sweeteners aren't doing you any favors. Keep watching to learn how these low sugar health foods could be making you gain weight instead of lose it. Here's a stat for you. The number of Americans who consume products that contain sugar-free sweeteners grew from 70 million in 1987 to 160 million in 2000. And that's actually not good news because at the same time, the number of overweight Americans has increased from about 30% to over 65% of the population. Coincidence? I think not. <laughs> and it's a bummer because many people consume artificial sweeteners in an attempt to be healthier, to lose weight, to prevent cardiovascular disease, and control diabetes. But we've all been tricked. As it turns out, these sweeteners don't actually do any of those things, despite the misleading labels on the can or package. In fact, research shows that these sugar substitutes might actually be worse for your health than consuming sugar itself. But let's pause a second and talk a little bit about the human side of this issue before I pummel you with research, stats, and data. Giving up or reducing the amount of sweets that you eat or drink is difficult. Your brain and your body crave them because thousands of years ago, food was hard to come by, especially quick calories from simple carbohydrates and sugars. So even though our environment has changed drastically over that time, our genetics haven't, meaning that your brain still thinks you need to gobble up any sweets that you can find. You are also probably raised on a steady stream of sweets, I know I was, because food marketed to children has more added sugar than non-kid food. And let's not forget that there is an entire industry that makes its money by keeping people addicted to sweets. Don't get me wrong, I'm a big believer in treats, and I don't think that the answer, at least for most folks, is giving up sweets altogether, at least not long term. Sugar can be okay in moderation, it's just that what we think of as moderation is still too much. And the downstream impact of sugar, sweets, and sweetened beverages creates a lot of stress on our bodies and minds. When you think about things that cause you stress, you probably don't instantly think of sugar. But guess what? Sugar and sweeteners are near the top of the list when it comes to placing stress on the body and creating a feedback loop of increasing stress response activation. Too much sugar can all by itself trigger anxiety, depression, panic, brain fog, and sleep issues, all symptoms of a poorly regulated stress response system. In simple terms, sugar creates stress directly, and it indirectly makes it more likely that other things will stress you out. So while we definitely have a collective problem with sugar, Unfortunately, the answer to this problem is not artificial sweeteners. It would be nice if it was, wouldn't it? If we could simply swap out sugar-sweetened treats for ones sweetened by things like erythritol, aspartame, sucralose, xylitol, or malitol. These artificial sweeteners have found their way into so many food products, and they've been shrewdly marketed as zero calorie and therefore healthy. But they are not better for your health. In fact, in many ways, they're worse. First of all, artificial sweeteners increase your risk for type 2 diabetes. In a large-scale study of over 60,000 women, those who drank one 12-ounce diet soda a week had a 33% increased risk of developing type 2 diabetes. And women who drank one 20-ounce soda a week had a 66% increased risk. One can a week equaled a 33% increased risk. Not only did these women experience the increased risk of diabetes that goes with sugar consumption without actually consuming sugar, but they also drank twice as much diet soda as those who drank regular sugar-sweetened sodas, effectively doubling their risk. The average diet soda drinker 
consumes three diet drinks a day. Second, artificial sweeteners are super addictive, much more so than sugar itself, which is saying something. In one study, rats who were offered the choice between cocaine or artificial sweeteners always picked the artificial sweetener, even if the rats were previously programmed to be cocaine addicts. And artificial sweeteners encourage sugar cravings, training our brains to seek sweetness, which then causes us to eat more in order to satisfy that craving. They actively sabotage your body's ability to tell when you're hungry or when you're full. And third, despite what you would expect from products that hype all the sweetness without the consequences, several large studies show that artificial sweeteners do cause weight gain and obesity, not because of calories consumed, but because they change your metabolism causing you to put on fat even if you're eating less. On the other hand, when your metabolism slows down, you become hungry more quickly, and you're prone to eat way more food, especially simple carbohydrates. Because artificial sweeteners confuse and slow down your metabolism, you burn fewer calories every day, making it harder to lose or keep off inflammatory fat, balance your blood sugar, and feel energetic and sharp. On top of all that, research shows that artificial sweeteners are also linked to adverse cardiovascular events, stroke, interstitial cystitis, gut dysfunction, and hormonal imbalance. Where might you find these artificial sweetener tricksters? Well, like I mentioned, diet sodas and other zero-calorie beverages are one of the biggest sources of artificial sweeteners, and people guzzle them by the gallons. But they're also found in many other categories of processed foods, including baked goods, candy, yogurt, juices, ice cream, chewing gum, and even condiments like reduced sugar ketchup and salad dressings. So, what should you do with this information? Number one, ditch the diet beverages. I mean it, this is a non-negotiable for me. Because of the addictive qualities of diet beverages, No one can a day or only on the weekend strategy is going to be successful here. And I'm not just talking about diet soda either. Popular brands of zero calorie health waters, sports drinks, and sweetened teas are also on the chopping block. And don't forget your coffee drinks with sugar-free syrups. There's just no possible health justification for drinking them. If you must have that pumpkin spice latte or pink lemonade, it's honestly better to drink the real sugar-sweetened version, although it's important to note that regular consumption of beverages that are sweetened with real sugar is damaging to your health as well. The bottom line is that making the swap to unsweetened beverages will save your teeth, your heart, your brain, and your waistline in the long run, and significantly reduce your overall inflammation in the short run. Number two, significantly reduce the amount of processed and ultra-processed food that you consume. By default, this will reduce your consumption of artificial sweeteners, which is just the beginning of the health benefits that you'll enjoy from this strategy. Ultra-processed foods are mostly made from substances extracted from foods, such as fats, starches, added sugars, and protein isolates. They also typically contain additives like artificial colors and flavors, stabilizers and preservatives, and other chemical compounds. The ingredients in these foods have little nutritional value. They come with their own health risks, separate from the problems of artificial sweeteners, and they're actively designed to be addictive. My ultimate example of an ultra-processed food is a Twinkie, (laughs) but they also masquerade as healthy foods. Think protein bars, veggie chips, and pre-made smoothies. Avoiding this category of food-like product will help you avoid artificial sweeteners. Number three, enjoy sweet treats that are made from real food, like dates, raw honey, real maple syrup, and other fruits. Yes, it's easy to go overboard with these sweets too, but because most of us aren't drinking straight maple syrup, The combination of these sugar sources with fiber, protein, and healthy fats can minimize the negative impact on your body's blood sugar and stress response system. 
When my clients are trying to break away from artificial sweeteners, I often recommend that they have a small, naturally sweetened treat on hand, perhaps in their freezer, their desk drawer at work, or their pantry. That way they can enjoy it when the mood strikes, both as an affirmation of their good choice-making ability and also to minimize the temptation to grab a donut or a scoop of ice cream or a candy bar in a fit of craving. Speaking of cravings, I want to reiterate that artificial sweeteners are designed on purpose to get you addicted to the foods and drinks that contain them. This is frustrating, but I don't want you to take that frustration out on yourself. While I've used some pretty strong language in condemning the consumption of artificial sweeteners, I also fully recognize how hard it is to break that addiction. It doesn't make you a bad person, and it doesn't mean that you're doomed. Yes, it will take some effort, dedication, and probably support. But if your cravings or appetite for sweets feels out of control, there are functional medicine strategies to help. Here are a few of my favorites. Number one, harness the power of your microbiome by taking a probiotic that helps control cravings. Specific strains of bacteria have been shown to take the edge off your appetite and help you feel satisfied with less. By incorporating these helpful bugs into your own microbiome, using targeted probiotics containing these strains, you can help curb cravings. I'll put a link to my favorite one in the show notes. Number two, Support your body's GLP-1 production, naturally. This hormone is what drugs like Ozempic target to help folks balance their blood sugar, eat less, and lose weight. But there are other ways to help boost your GLP-1 using foods and plant-based nutraceuticals. I talk much more in-depth about ways to help your body make more GLP-1 in another video, so go check that out after you finish with this one. And number three. Drink more water. Sometimes food or sugar cravings are dehydration in disguise. If you're looking for a little pizzazz, add some sliced cucumbers, citrus, or herbs like mint to your water and soak it overnight. This trick infuses flavor and some micronutrients without relying on sweetness. By kicking those diet drinks to the curb, reducing your overall intake of processed foods, and utilizing functional strategies to calm cravings, including healthier sweet treats, you'll feel a lot better now and dramatically improve the health and longevity of your future self. I hope you found this information helpful, even if it's a bit of a bummer. If I've managed to convince you to give up some artificial sweeteners, but you need help, be sure to check out the resources in the video description. I'd love to support you. And be sure to check out my other videos too. There's more info where this came from. I'd also really appreciate it if you'd like this video and subscribe to my channel. It helps other folks discover the benefits of functional medicine and take advantage of all of the free resources and discounts that we hope to share. And it will help make sure you don't miss a thing in the future. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.